Hello, I'm Rebecca Flaherty and this week I'm going to be showing you how to use this training floral template to make this pattern here. This template is the fourth one of a set of six which you can find in my Etsy store. If you want to test the concept out first and have a go for free, you can get this template for free from my Pattern Makers Toolkit and follow along with that one, swapping out the colours and flower shapes we're using here today. For accessibility, this video has fully edited subtitles and I've also got timestamps set up so if you're a regular here, feel free to go ahead and skip to the beginning of the tutorial. Along with all these other floral template ones, this is a more advanced level tutorial. So if you haven't ever made a pattern using the diamond method in Procreate before, then I suggest checking out this tutorial first as it covers everything in much more detail and at a slower pace than I'm going to be going here. I've also got lots of beginner friendly pattern tutorials on my channel which will help you get better acquainted with the way I make my pattern repeats. This next part is very important. You may be used to dragging and dropping files into Procreate, but if you do it with PSD files, it will flatten all the layers, so be sure to import it the way I'm about to show you. Also, yes, the thumbnails are white and look empty, but I'll explain why in a second. So let's get started. From the gallery screen in Procreate here, I'm going to import the canvas and it's canvas number four we want. All of those thumbnails there will be blank white. The reason for that is it keeps the file size down. You just need to come in here and turn on the sketch layers. Don't ask me why, but for whatever reason, saving something with a plain white screen reduces the file size a little bit. And then that allows me to upload these all to Etsy in one single zip file. So don't panic when it looks like you've got blank documents. You just need to come in here and turn them on. So you'll see this has got all the layers and sketch groups and everything set up, which you'll be familiar with if you've ever followed one of my pattern tutorials before. These templates though don't have the texture overlays on them. So we're going to start drawing in our sketch layer. And if you don't have this canvas set up like I do, and you're starting with the free template, you just need to add a layer above your template layer. And I'll turn the sketch diamond off, which is just this empty diamond here. And you will need to just draw a rough diamond that goes all the way off the edges on all four sides of the canvas like that. That will be in place of this sketch diamond and then you can follow along how we are. So I'll get rid of that and turn this one on because this already has this diamond in there for us. So this template has all of the spots for the stems, the leaves and the flowers in place. So all we have to do is add our own elements inside these. I'm gonna use some floral stamps from this stamp brush set that comes with the floral set. You can use any other stamps you've made yourself. There's a few free ones on my pattern makers toolkit or you could just freehand them. You don't have to use stamps in your sketch layer. I just use them because it makes things a little bit quicker. So with the diamond method, we just draw everything that's in black and then the bits in blue around the outside will be made by duplicating those. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'll use this one for the big flowers on this. So on a layer above my sketch diamond, and I'll work in orange. I'm just going to stamp one of these flowers into each of these black circles. Then we need to add some little berry details in these. So I'm going to use this one here to do that. So there's two ways of doing these, depending on which method you find easier and quickest to, to get speedy in. So you can stamp one, select it, and then rotate it around like this. Then you could duplicate that and keep rotating them around that way, duplicating off this bottom one each time. So you've got that way of doing it. Or you could, all on the same layer, just stamp these like this and then use the select tool to move each one around like this. So that's up to you which of those ways of moving these around that you use. If you find it quicker and easier to just keep duplicating the layer, you could do that. Or if you find this way quick and easier, you could do it this way. I think I'm finding this way quicker and easier today than duplicating the layers. So I'm going to go and go ahead and get all of these in place in all of these placeholders. There we go. That's all of those in place now. That takes quite a while, doesn't it? Stamping all those in and turning them around. So now that we've got all of these flower elements, in place I'm going to merge them all together and merge them down with the sketch diamond. The reason I like to do them on a separate layer is that like places like here it's easier if you can transform that without having to 
cut bits of the diamond out first so that's why I initially do it all on an empty layer it's not a problem to do that if later on if you need to move something around and move this around that's okay it's just easier to keep things separate until you need to merge them down so now let's use that to fill all of these spaces around here so that as we draw our pattern we're aware of where things are while we're drawing it so let's duplicate this layer tap up here to transform and we'll turn snapping and magnetics on and those all the way up then we'll drag this down and over here and snap it into place there as you snap it into the corners of the canvas you'll see those orange lines there let me drag this one up and over and then last of all this one down here so each time you do this make sure that you can see those orange lines there and if you're using the same canvas template that I am you'll notice that all of these lines match up nicely as well so let's merge those top four layers together now and I'm going to tap and invert those so when we come to illustrate this we are going to draw anything that's a flower that's surrounded by a black circle or a flower that's a black stem we're going to draw those and then everything else as you can see is going to be made by repeating those if you want to do things like change up the shape of the leaves you can also do a test of that in this sketch layer as well but I'm going to go ahead and just freehand that in my pattern layers now so let's turn this on and I'm going to add a layer above this pattern marker so as always the line we want to draw first is this one that's marked in green this one crosses over two edges of the canvas so it goes down here and eventually joins up with itself down there again so this green one is the first one that we will draw so I'm going to use my tracing crayon and go and turn stabilization all the way up for this because it helps me to get a smoother line color wise I'm going to use this pink one here this palette here comes with the trailing floral set and I'm just gonna draw this line following the green one down to here we'll draw that to there and then what we want to do is have this matched up with the top of itself up here so we need to bring this bit down here and then we can merge that in so to do that I'm going to put a mark off each of these corners making sure we go right off the edges there duplicate this layer tap up here to transform and we're going to snap it down into this bottom corner the same as we did when we were moving our sketch around making sure we've got the orange lines there then we can zoom in here and make sure that this bit merges in. If I invert the colours on this one, you can see this one's the one we've moved and this pink one is the one we need to merge in with it. So I'm going to undo that invert because it's easier to see how they're merging if they are both the same colour. So on this layer here, I'll just carry on drawing this line and merging in with that one. So now when we bring this back up there, we'll have this continual line going all over the canvas there. So once you have your green line in place, you can then delete this one. And we can then just go ahead and draw over all of the other black stems on this pattern. And then when we come to do this one here it's going to be easier to put this back down here and have this merging in with it and also this one here we want to be able to add this part in down there so again i'm going to duplicate this tap transform and snap this down here into the corner and then making sure we're on this bottom layer again we can merge this in with there and this we can draw and merge in with where it's going to end on there. So now I can delete this top layer and all of those parts are in place. And the next thing I like to draw is the leaves. So I'm going to do that on a layer underneath and we can just add one there and then we can draw in the leaves.
you don't have to stick to the leaf shapes that are marked out on here they're just placeholders for the leaves rather than like rather than saying your leaves have to be this shape you could do them all kinds of shapes you could make like like oak tree leaves like this you could do pointy leaves like that there's all sorts of different shapes you could do so yeah use these templates as a guide rather than literally something to trace over and let your creativity run free each time just make sure that you stick to the boundaries of the leaf things for example if you were to make a leaf down here that went like that and then on this leaf up here which is this one here if you made this one kind of go out all the way over there where these two meet you're going to get those overlapping each other which might be fine if you've done an overlapping pattern but just bear in mind if you are changing the shapes to stick to within the boundaries of the template and then we'll fill all of these leaves with color drop and then we're going to fill this gap that is on all of the leaf shapes here by duplicating this layer come up here to our adjustments and tap gaussian blur and we're going to add a blur of just three percent hide this blurred layer and still with the blurred layer selected come up here to our select tool you want automatic selection and tap somewhere outside the shapes and bring in the threshold so it comes in about halfway between the outside of the shape and this line here we want to fill so something like that something about 80 percent 70 to 80 percent should work then we're going to invert the selection and now we have an area inside the shape selected we can add a new layer tap fill and that's going to fill that little smaller area inside all of those leaf shapes and that is now all filled all on that layer without us having to trace around it so now we can delete the blurred layer and merge those two together so now we'll tackle the flowers next i think so above the stems we'll add a layer and i'm going to draw the center parts in first and i'm going to use this same mustard color for doing these so we'll just draw a circle for all of these by drawing a circle holding tap and then release and that way you'll get a nice perfect circle and then we'll do the same color drop filling all of those and then fixing that gap with the gaussian blur now we'll do the petals on a layer underneath so just tap onto your stems add a layer underneath and then we'll use that to do the petals and when you're drawing these if you make sure you keep the line joined up underneath so that when we tap to fill we're filling a closed shape so then when we fill that it's not going to spill out over the rest of the page so here i'm at the stage where i've just done the gaussian blur and filled the layer above before i merge these two together because i've got quite a lot of parts that are close together here what i'm going to do is on this top layer here the one where I've filled the smaller area I'm going to go and erase parts like this where they've where there's two bits that are close together and it's kind of merged them into one so just with a really small eraser I'm just going to go in here and erase back those bits that, to keep them separate this one here If you erase them too much you're obviously going to see the gap in the middle again so don't go don't erase them too much but just enough to get that separation back between the petals there and then once those are all done we can pinch and merge those two together i think i'm going to change the color of these to this lighter blue so we'll alpha lock and fill it with that color to add the line work to these i'm going to bring the sketch above so i can see it and turn the opacity down on this layer and we'll bring the opacity down on the the template as well so now on a layer above these ones i'm going to use my line details brush to add these swirls in on the flowers and i use this darker blue to do that
and then we'll use the dot brush to do these. So I'm just going to go and repeat that for all of these flowers now. And then once we have all of these details in on that layer, we're going to add a layer above the middle parts here. And we're going to put these dots on there. I might turn the opacity up on this a bit. Maybe change the blend mode to linear burn so we can see those a bit better. So I think to start with, I'll just do these in a white colour and then we, I might change around the blend mode or the colour of those later. I'll just do them in white so I can easily see them for now. And then we'll repeat that for all of the other flowers. So that's all the details on the flowers done. Next we need to illustrate the berries. So we'll do those on top of the stems again on a layer coming up above those. And I'm going to use this blue colour and my tracing crayon and just draw in all the circles for these first. Now we're going to lay, add a layer underneath the berries and draw these back leaves in. So tracing crayon and I'm going to use this green colour again. And then on a layer above the berries this time, we're going to add the top leaves in. I want this to be a slightly lighter colour, so I'm going to add another layer. So we've got two empty layers. This top one, I'm going to fill with this 50% grey colour here. I'm going to check, clip it down to the layer below, and I'm going to change the blend mode to colour dodge, or um, we'll make it 30%. And then with this same green colour, on the layer underneath, we can just add these leaves in and that will be a slightly lighter colour to the one we've used for the, what's behind if I just turn the sketch off. You can see that's going to come out a slightly lighter colour. And then the last thing to do is to add these little cross details on the berries. So above the berries, add a layer and using this light colour here and the line detail brush, I'll just mark out that little cross on each of these. So I think now that's all the individual elements, apart from one I've forgotten down here, which I'll just fix now. So we'll turn all the sketch layers off now, and I'm going to change the background colour to this creamy white colour. And first of all, we'll add some shading to the leaves, I think. So. All of the shading is going to be used, done using colour burn and colour dodge blend modes and this grey colour. Oops, not like that though. <laughs> so come down to the leaves first, we'll work our way up from the bottom. So we'll add a layer above the leaves, make it a clipping mask and we'll make this one colour burn 40%. And we'll use this grey colour here which is 50% grey colour and I'm going to use the gradient texture for this one. I'm just going to add a bit of that darker colour coming out from the bottom of each one of these leaves. Maybe make it a bit bigger. And what Colour Burn does is it brings up the darkness and saturation of the layer that's underneath it. So we get this kind of darker version of the colour we've used for the leaves. And the good thing about using Colour Burn, rather than just drawing this on in a darker colour, is that if we want to change the colour of the leaves, that shading will still apply to whatever we change it to. So on this layer here, we alpha lock that and I change it to this, um, make it this purple colour and we fill the layer. That shading is still going to fit perfectly with the purple. Whatever the colour we change this to, we don't need to change the shading above. Whereas if we'd shaded that in a darker brown, we'd have to go and find a darker purple to fill that with. So let's just undo that and carry on. With this, we'll add some lighter colour to the edges now. So we're going to add a layer above the leaves again and that will get clipped in between those and we're going to make the blend mode on this colour dodge and take the opacity down to 40%. And then with this mid grey colour again, we're going to add a touch of that to the edges of the leaves like this. Then the next layer to do some shading on is the pink, so we'll add a layer above that. Make this one colour burn, 40% and clip it down and I'm going to add some darker colour where the stems come out from underneath the petals. 
this is already quite a dark and saturated colour so it's only a slight difference that we're going to get there. We could also put a bit of that where it comes out from underneath the berries as well. I'm not even sure how much this is going to show up on the camera but never mind. And then on the stems layer to add some texture we'll add a layer above, change the blend mode of this to colour dodge 40%, clip it down and using from the floral set we're going to use this subtle texture brush here and still using the grey colour and I'll zoom in here which is going to add a little bit of that lighter shade on there so I'll undo that and then just scribble over the whole layer all in one go and that's added that texture there to those stems and then we can duplicate that layer and apply it to the bottom one of the leaves as well so if we you can see that on there and then we can duplicate it one more time and add it to the top leaves as well and place it in between there so the next one we have to do is the berries so we'll add a layer above make it a clipping mask make this one color burn 40 percent and with the gradient texture brush i'm just going to add a little bit of darker color to the bottoms of these berries where they come out from behind the leaves there and then to add a bit of lighter texture to the top of them we'll tap back onto the berries add another layer this will get clipped between the two and we'll make the blend mode on this color dodge and the opacity 40 percent and then we'll just add a bit of lighter color to the tops of these and like i said if we want to change out the color of these berries so we wanted to make them purple berries we still get all of that shading held in place there and that's why I love using blend modes for my shading because I do like to mess around with colours afterwards and this allows me to change the colours around without having to then change every shading layer I've made as well. So the next thing to add the shading to would be these petals here, this is the next one so we'll add a colour burn layer to this at 40% and clip this one down and I'm going to add some darker colour just coming out from the middle of the leaves there if you want it to apply to the line work as well then find your line work layer and bring that underneath then this color burn will darken what's on the line work layer as well and then to add the lighter detail to the outside we're going to go underneath the color burn but above the line work here add a layer in between there and make this one color dodge 40 percent and then again with the same grey colour we can just add some lighter colour to the outside of the leaves here, sorry the outside of the petals. And with these brushes you also get that nice texture in there as well. And then the next thing we have to do is these middle parts. So let's add a layer above those, make it a clipping mask and colour burn 40% which is for the darker area. Just add that at the bottom there. I'm going to bring these bits underneath so we can darken those as well. And then I'm going to alpha lock the layer and I'm going to make them this peach colour here. We'll see how that goes. So back up to the colour burn layer and I'll carry on adding this darker shade to the bottom corners of those. And then to add the lighter colour to the top in between this one and this one I'm going to add a layer, make this one colour dodge 40% and just lighten the top of that there. So then I'm going to repeat the colour burn and colour dodge on all of these flowers. And I've changed my mind again on this, I'm actually going to fill this dots layer with a 50% grey colour and I'm going to change the blend mode to colour dodge and make it 50%. I think I prefer that more subtle look there. And so that is all the illustration done for this pattern now. We didn't have any, any parts of the pattern that were in the extra group, so we don't actually need this folder here for this one. And we can now go ahead and build out the pattern. So we'll turn off the sketch layer, hide our background colour, and turn off this pattern marker. And I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and copy all. Then we can close this group, turn it off, and put the background colour back on. Then swipe down again and tap paste. So we've already got the corner marks in here, we can duplicate this layer, tap 
and we're going to build out the pattern the same way as we did with the sketch layer so drag it down here first although it doesn't matter which order you make put these in and then drag this one up and into this corner And every time I did that, I was checking that I had those orange lines in the corners there. And then with this pattern, it doesn't matter which order it goes in, we can just pinch these top four layers together and erase those marks in the middle. And then on the bottom layer, we can erase those off the corners there. Then we can pinch those together. Making patterns like this in Procreate is how I make all my patterns, whether it's for personal or professional work. The only difference though between what you've seen here today and what I would do in my normal workflow is this last part, building out the pattern here, I would do this in Photoshop using smart objects. I've got an automation set up to convert the pattern folder into a smart object and then to automatically build it out around the canvas here. And you can do it just by pressing one button. Using smart objects means you don't have to flatten anything and then you can edit part of the pattern and it will update for all the other smart objects. In terms of quality, it's absolutely fine to use this method. Um, it's just that it makes for a quicker workflow and more editability using Photoshop at the end. But I often get asked like, what do you do with your patterns after you've made them in Procreate? Is Procreate a, a legitimate way to make professional patterns? And the answer is yes, this is how I make all my patterns that I license and sell and also use for print on demand. And making them this way means you don't get those white lines that you sometimes get, but to double check before we export this as either a JPEG or PNG, we can do a quick test on that now. So I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and copy all and tap up here on my top layer, swipe down again and tap paste. So now we've got a flattened version of our pattern tile. So this is what we would be exporting. Underneath that, I'm going to add a layer and fill it with black. And then we can, if there's any gaps in the pattern, that black will show through. So we can tap on this and drag it up here until it says 1800 pixels there. Then we can duplicate this and snap one over here into this corner, zoom in and just check that pattern edge there. And there's no gutter line in there. And we can pinch that together, duplicate that, drag this one down and again, zoom in and just show and hide this and we can just check that seam along there to make sure that that's all looking good too. So that's how you would check the pattern to make sure that there's no gutters or seams in it. You can find this template in a set of six over in my Etsy store as well as the original pattern maker canvas and brush set which has got all the drawing brushes I've used here today. If you're a Pattern Makers Toolkit member, you'll get 10% off everything in my Etsy store. The Pattern Makers Toolkit is kind of like a Patreon group, except it's free to join. You'll get access to all the resources in the Pattern Makers Toolkit on my website, including those I make for my Skillshare classes, early access to some of my YouTube tutorials and drawing prompts, discounts in my Etsy store, and one new freebie exclusively via email every month. If you want to learn more about my Procreate to Photoshop workflow using automations and smart objects, you can find a class on that over on Skillshare. If you're not already on Skillshare and you sign up using the link below, you'll get an extra 30 days for free. All of the links are in the description. And don't forget to subscribe here if you want to see more pattern tutorials like this every week. That's all from me today. Have fun, stay creative, and I will see you next time.